This is a video presentation on pelvic ultrasound tips and tricks. It is performed in two planes. Step 1 is to begin in longitudinal plane with thumb at 12 o'clock position and the step 2 is to twist the probe so that it is facing at 9 o'clock position. In the longitudinal plane, this is the picture of the uterus that we get on a scan and we move the probe from left to right to get the entire view. We twist the probe and this is the view that we get in transverse or coronal plane and we move the probe from top to bottom. Step 2 is to assess the endometrium in a longitudinal plane. In case of antiverted uterus, the probe is kept in anterior fornics, in posterior fornics for retroverted uterus and just over the cervix for an actual position of the uterus. Step 3 is to look for ovaries. After the probe is twisted in a transverse position, it is swept from left to right and ovaries are seen on side of the uterus. Ovaries are measured in three dimensions that includes length, width and depth and its volume is expressed in cubic centimeter. This is an example of an early pregnancy scan which shows step 1 to step 6. Step 1 is measurement of cervix. The red line highlights the entire cervix with the yellow line in the center being the endocervical canal. It starts from the reflection of bladder to the lip of cervix. This demonstrates the C-section scar which is measured from the bladder to the central endometrial line. This is a picture demonstrating the right ovary with measurements being performed in three dimensions that includes length, height and width. Similarly, this is the measurement of the ovary on the left side in three dimensions. Left ovary released an egg in this cycle and this is a corpus luteum which is known as an eggshell. This is the picture showing two gestational and a sac suggestive of twin pregnancy. In twin pregnancy, lambda sign is a thick intertwin membrane suggestive of dichorionic pregnancy and T sign is a thin membrane suggestive of monochorionic pregnancy. In our case, this is the thick septum in between suggestive of a dichorionic pregnancy. This picture shows the measurement of gestational sac 1 in three dimensions, which is D1, D2 and D3, giving us the mean sac diameter. And this is measurement of the gestational sac number 2 in three planes. This picture demonstrates yolk sac, which is seen in individual sac, which is more sort of suggesting of a dichorionic pregnancy. Exact chorionosity is determined when the ground rump length is between 45 and 84 millimeter. This is the 3D picture showing the uterus with two gestational sacs. Thank you for watching.